For most of us, when we're trying to achieve a planet aquarium like this, we're going to use CO2. But there are a number of liquid carbon or liquid CO2 products out there. What do they actually do? And do they provide real carbon to your plants? No. But they do kind of work. And let's explain why. Hello everyone, this is Bentley. And today we're going to talk about liquid carbon. Stuff like Flourish Excel, Easy Carbon, Easy Carbo. There's a million different liquid carbon products out there. Uh, every manufacturer probably has some version of this. Uh, this ancient bottle of Excel is the one I just happen to have on hand to represent things. But liquid carbon is not liquefied CO2. In order for CO2, carbon dioxide, to achieve a liquid form, it has to be kept under a relatively high amount of pressure, which is why when we get a CO2 canister, right, when we're putting gaseous CO2, it's actually stored in a liquid form because of the pressure in the cylinder. That's not happening in packaging like this, right? This at room temperature, this is not going to happen. It takes significantly more for carbon dioxide to actually sit in liquid form. So what is liquid CO2? Liquid CO2 is most commonly and almost universally, there are some super rare cases where this is not what it is, but um, I honestly don't know a specific product that is, but almost all of them are glutaraldehyde. Sounds, sounds like a big word, might sound scary, and it should. Glutaraldehyde is a sterilizer or a biocide. This is used to kill bacteria. Uh, Glutaraldehyde is often used in hospitals, as an example, as a cleaning agent to ensure that things are sterile. But in extremely low doses, glutaraldehyde can be aquarium safe. And this is what these are, glutaraldehyde. So what the heck does glutaraldehyde actually do? Glutaraldehyde, as I said before, is a biocide. Biocides basically kill bacteria. And in the way that this is applied in aquarium is all the biological films that form over surfaces that often can be the basis of what forms some of our algaes, especially things like the dust or surface kind of spot algae, this biocide breaks them down and basically inhibits them by preventing them from being able to continue to grow or appear in the very first place. So how does this help plants? Well, in very low doses, in very controlled doses, by inhibiting those biological films, those algaes, right, what that does is it makes it so the plants do not have to compete with algae for all of the nutrients and the current available carbon in the aquarium. Without competition, it means that your plants are more likely to flourish and look something like this. Big, lush plants, lots of color, all those good things, right? But here's the problem. Glutaraldehyde and you know, similar things, but even when we're using them in low doses, still carries a risk. And one of the bigger problems that it actually carries is that we as hobbyists are not learning why algae is occurring in the first place and what maybe the imbalances are that we would need to fix to help our plants naturally compete with algae without the necessity of an additional chemical. There is some risk that by using glutaraldehyde or liquid CO2, liquid carbon, whatever you want to call it, you're actually also reducing the natural biofilms that help our natural beneficial bacterial colonies prevent things like some types of diseases, pro processing all of the waste that's in there, the ammonias, the nitrites, etc. The, the glutaraldehyde being a biocide will also impact them to some degree. That means that in theory, we're not getting the best possible biological bacterial colonies we can have in our aquariums. Now granted, they're not affecting aerobic bacteria as much as they are some of the biofilms that lead to algae, but it is still a minor impact. And I'm sure someone's going to beat me up in the comments about it. And blah, blah, blah. We're tr we need to take this at a high level, understand the basics of where the, the primary negative and positive are. Okay, let's. We're not trying to go full scientific research paper at this point, folks. Chill out. <laughs> Keep tinfoil hat guy off the comments. <laughs> but 
here's the thing. Can we use a liquid carbon product? Yes. Does that provide available carbon to our plants? Basically, no. Technically, if you were to measure carbon in your aquarium by parts per million, after adding a liquid carbon product, you would see a very, 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 very tiny uptick in carbon. We're talking like one to two parts per million. This is effectively nothing. You would do significantly better with a number of other things. However, what it does is prevents our algaes from being as effective by breaking them down and ruining their ability to uptake additional nutrients. That means whatever uptake the algae was doing is now more readily available for the plants and the plants do not have to compete with the algae. Keep in mind that our plants are much more complex organisms than algae. Algaes are very simplistic, not fully single cell, but some of them kind of are. So because they're simplistic, they don't need as complex a balance and mixture of nutrition to be healthy and lush where our plants do. And so when certain things get out of balance, algaes have the opportunity to capitalize on that imbalance because they only need one or two things to thrive and explode. Whereas plants need all the macros, all the micros, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Much more complex. We're talking about many, many more compounds that they need in order to process and grow as a part of photosynthesis where algaes just need like one, right? So this is where something like a liquid carbon product can be helpful, but should you use it? That's for you to decide. Me personally, I only have this for spot dosing when I deal with larger algae problems. Specifically, typically, uh, if I ever see staghorn algae or if I run into problems with blackbeard algae, I will spot dose the glutaraldehyde to kill the algae so it prevents it from growing further and further and then allow nature to slowly break it down and get rid of it. Or in some cases I can tear it off. It depends on the type of algae and how frustrated I am at the time. <laughs> but usually I allow, allow the wildlife within my aquarium, Siamese algae eaters, you know, Florida flagfish, stuff like that, to go and after that algae has been killed, slowly mow it down and get rid of it so that long term, I'm not actually dealing with algae all that much. And keep in mind that we are always going to have some amount of algae in our aquariums. That's just nature. There will be some algae. Can we minimize it? Yes. Are we going to have zero algae? No, unless you wanna have like a full maintenance crew and you're like working a 40 hour a week job, keeping for you know, maintenance on like four tanks. <laughs> I don't think any of us want to work that hard, right? Let's recap. Liquid carbon. What is it? Liquid carbon is typically a chemical compound known as glutaraldehyde. Does this provide any noteworthy increase of available carbon to our plants? No. What it instead is an algicide in the case of what we use. Truly, it is a biocide. And what it does is it inhibits algae from being able to grow and continue existing. That, by inhibiting it, makes the available nutrients and carbon no longer being competed for between algae and plants. So the plants, effectively speaking, have more available carbon and nutrition available to keep growing. Is it dangerous for our fish? It can be. However, most of the prepackaged products, Flourish Excel, Easy Carbon, Easy Carbo, it, whatever name you want to go by, right? There are a million different names from every person that makes some form of fertilizer. They will always have dosing instructions. And usually it is a dose per day that you're allowed to do based on the gallonage of your tank. Follow those very strictly and you should not run into any problems. Should you be dosing a liquid carbon product every day? Long-term, realistically, I personally would not suggest it. However, do plenty of people find success by doing so? Yes. What I personally like to use these products for is when I deal with particularly problematic algae outbreaks, using it as a spot dosing tool to kill and inhibit the algae so I can get it back under control. That's it, gang. That's your quick lesson on liquid carbon products, what they are, what they actually do at kind of a high level, and how they can help our planet aquariums, and whether or not 
you should use one? The real answer is, it's your choice. If you deal with algae a lot and you kind of have a continuous problem with algae, then a liquid carbon product could be the thing that helps you kind of break through that cycle and get a little bit more balance and see better plant growth in your plants overall. Just keep in mind one final lesson, certain plants, typically a lot of our like Aponagetan type plants, so like Madagascar lace is particularly one of the problem cases in this, can be very susceptible to glutaraldehyde. They just happen to have a really poor interaction and they will melt and be very unhappy. Almost all of the Aponagetans are like this. Madagascar lace is the most prevalent one that absolutely hates, hates, hates having glutaraldehyde in your aquarium. Some crypts will struggle with it as well as some of your more kind of grassy. Um, so think of like any of your Helanthiums and things like that. Uh, dwarf Sagittarius, stuff like that. Some of those plants can also struggle with glutaraldehyde in the aquarium. So if you don't have Aponagetans, but you do have some of that grassy stuff, maybe only do a smaller version of the dose and kind of see what happens to your aquarium and don't like dose full dose every day right away. Kind of step into it slow and monitor to make sure just in case your plants don't happen to have one of those sensitivities and run into issues. But if you're using things like Anubiuses and Jama ferns, those almost never have a problem with it. You should be okay. Uh, that's it, gang. If you learned something from this one, leave a comment down below. Uh, hit the thumbs up, please. Those are the two like most important things to tell the, the YouTube gods that like, hey, more people should probably watch this because I liked it. And if I liked it, someone else is going to like it. Uh, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. Ring the little notification bell. That way you get to watch all the tips and tricks videos like this one here. Uh, we have all sorts of like question and answer stuff that happens in our, our weekly live stream and eventually we're going to have a bunch of like new tanks getting done um brother-in-law james's tank is pretty much ready for fish we just have to settle on a few things so you'll get to see an update on that relatively soon and then this tank that uh is right beside me but you can't see it uh my wife and i'll be aquascaping that pretty soon because my wrist is finally getting to a point of where i can almost lift things again which means i can lift the hardscape into it and get it rolling as always my friends thank you so much for watching and stay awesome